Do not attempt to adjust your computer. There is nothing wrong. You are in the right place at the right time. The mothership flies through cyberspace once again. My name is Dobie Maxwell, also known as the King I of Uranus. I am. Praise you. No more will I. Shut up. You will soon. This is our Yoda. This is Al, our alien pal. We have a triple. Greg DeGuire over here. Carrie Turner right there. We have a full and growing cast on the mothership, and that's what we have put out on the radio, and that's what we're doing in our, our video cast. Yes. Welcome, everybody. <laughs> That's my trouble. Uh, the trouble with no trouble tribbles. Today we would like no to talk. Will I teach you today? Mm, <laughs> silence is golden. Golden silence is. <laughs> we were hoping to talk today about time travel. That's a fascinating subject that a lot of people have gotten into over the years. Albert Einstein theorized that it is technically possible. Uh, there have been many movies. Greg, you're the movie master. Mm -hmm. And I'm sure you've, you've seen Back to the Future. Oh, yeah. Three movies. And they wouldn't keep making movies like that if it wasn't such a thing. <laughs> what do you say? Silence, you have. <laughs> yes, we have plenty of silence. You've seen my comedy act before. <laughs> silence, you have. So what, what is, the, is the, uh, the fascination with time travel? I think all of us, you know, we, we want to go back and make up the mistakes that we made in life. Sure. We want to go mm -hmm. back and start over again. It's like a do-over. I mean, that just gets now I must praise you no more, will I? Okay, there's got to be an off button. This is, this is <laughs> for the first ten times. I will put him away. Away, I will put him. In the toilet, you will be flushed very soon. <laughs> in, now, in theory, like a lot of things, communism looks good on paper. Let's put the Yoda dummy out there. It'll be cute. It'll talk a couple of times. Well, there's an experience <laughs> with down in a flaming ball of smoldering wreckage. I and think Yoda was motion sensitive. I think. I, I think if the if the triple pipes up, we're gonna destroy it. Well, the triple is easy. He won't move unless you bop him on the head. We won't bop him on. We won't bop him on the head. And Al, our alien pal, is always here. We you see bubbles coming out of the back. Al had tacos for lunch. And Yoda's so still talking in the box. Apologies, I have. Okay, well, you know, this is the joys of live broadcasts. <laughs> Good thing we've been through this before. This will be on the Christmas blooper reel for many years to come. Now, time travel, very, very yes. famous. Do you, do, you, do you believe in it? Do you think about it? I, I think, think about it all the time. I think anything is possible uh, because the, far, the farther you, the faster you go, the faster time moves. So time travel is possible. If you go further out in space, then you're going to start messing with time. Uh, even satellites right now, it's all about Einstein's theory of special relativity. So the passage of time uh, is equal to what you're doing in the moment. So, for example, here's a theory of relativity. Uh, if you put your hands on a hot woman, a minute goes by in a second. Put your hands on a hot plate, and a second it feels like a minute. See, it's all relative to what you're doing and how time passes. Satellites in orbit nowadays have all their clocks <laughs> 10 minutes fast because they're moving so fast, they're telling time too fast. So all the satellites in orbit are 10 minutes fast than the clocks here on Earth. That's how they haven't synced up because they're moving so fast they're ahead of time. Now, there's always the movies that happen when the, the, alien, the alien, the astronaut from Earth, goes to the planet and comes back and he's the same age and his mm -hmm. children are older than him. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that and would be that older. would be theoretically the truth if that were ever to happen. So if you go well, I mean you have to go out of our solar system, but if you ever come back at the speed of light, which is eight hundred and sixty thousand no, that was hundred and eighty six thousand miles. Hundred and eighty six thousand miles now. So if you a do second. a second. Yeah. So if you do go that fast, that would be potentially possible. Or probable, I guess, because anything's possible, but would it be probable? Mm -hmm. And it is probable that you could do that. That's but right. you have to get something that's going to move that fast and not completely disintegrate you as you're going. So to move that fast without disintegrating yourself, you have to come up with a gravity field, something to keep you in that particular moment. So let's just say we're a few months off before this technology can actually be tested. I'd say out. it's a few <laughs> months. I'd say it's a few months off. Yeah. I think they really did a great job in the movie Back to the Future. That's the one I think that was yeah. pretty much the, yeah. the Cadillac of time travel movies. Yeah. And they thought about all the things like, you know, betting on the World Series. And yeah, that the, was fairly uh, close. Yeah, yeah, it was pretty close. The sports almanac. Frank the gray, gray sports <laughs> almanac, yeah. But, but the thing about it, though, I mean, just, just things that if you saw a situation like you wouldn't marry a certain person or you wouldn't, you know, hook up with a certain person. Like, you know, in my case, my best friend since childhood robbed a bank and tried to blame it on me. Well, I could say, okay, this is the guy that's going to rob the bank. Could I be friends until until then, knowing that's what he's going to do? I think there's a lot of things that would yeah. change. Sure. I mean, uh, Planet of the Apes, 
great time traveling movie. Mm -hmm. uh, Terminator, one of my favorites, oh, yes. the whole Terminator series. Star Trek IV, The Voyage Home, one of the better time travel movies around. That was always a good one. Uh, Doctor, Who. Doctor Who. And it went back to your guys' generation even a little bit before that, too. 60s. Mm -hmm. And now yeah. they re-brought it back for, you know, eight seasons. So. Even in specific episodes of Star Trek Next Generation, Star Trek Voyager, they've all had their time traveling episodes. Mm -hmm. uh, data, some cave uh, on Earth found Data's head, even though he was still alive on the ship. So they had to go back and retrace the events to how his head got buried on Earth, even though he was still in space. So he had to go back in time to find out why his head was there. That's interesting. Is you uh, uh, familiar with T John Titor, T-I-T-O-R? The name sounds familiar. John Titor allegedly was a time traveler back in, I think it was right when the internet kind of got into full gear, maybe late 1990s, mm -hmm. early 2000s. And he allegedly came back from 2034 to right some wrongs and get some, I think, clean water. There was a water problem, and he made all these predictions that there's going to be a great world war and famine and all these things, and, and they did not come true. But for a while, he was the rage of the internet. And I'm mm. thinking, boy, if, if this is made up in a hoax, it is a well-crafted mm. hoax, and it it's an extremely entertaining one. Yeah, we he, talked he about him on the old show a couple times, I'm pretty sure. Yeah, yeah he had, he, I don't know if he had a website, per se, but he had a lot of interviews that he conducted. And now, you don't, you don't hear from him anymore. Mm. So there was the times when he, he would answer, you know, posts. So I don't know if the hoax is over, or was it real or not real. I don't know. Fascinating. Yeah. Time travel is possible. Uh, well, not possible. But it, it's a lot of it's a lot of fun to sit and think about what it is that you would have done differently if you could. Or not only that, would you want to go back and make sure your parents did meet each other to make sure that you were born? Where exactly would you want to go back? Oh, I'm forgetting my favorite, Bill and Ted. Yeah. Time travel sure. and telephone booth. Yeah. That's a that's a fun time travel. Episode. What's the one that the, what's the one of the hot tub too? Hot, Hot Tub, tub time, time Machine. machine. Yeah. Eh, it was okay. And one of the Western or Disney movies, Meet the Robinsons, it was about you know time travel. And it was one of the best we have to watch those. I did not know that. Did they that go forward or backward? I went forward. It was good. Oh, then there's the uh, the Time Machine, H.G. Wells. Yes. A lot of Twilight Zone episodes. Yes. The one of the airplane, the, the jets, they went back to prom. Yep. Yeah. Oh, oh, and then there's uh, oh, uh, the Final Countdown. Sorry, I had to think about it for a second. Aircraft carrier gets sucked in a, a vortex off of Pearl Harbor. They go back to two days before the attack on Pearl Harbor. So they have all this modern tech. It was on board the USS Nimitz. Uh, went back in time with jets from the early 70s. Is like the Philadelphia experiment? No, it's a different movie. But uh, kind of the same principle. But that's one of, when I grew up, that was one of my favorite time traveling episodes all the time. And for the life of me, who is the guy that, well, geez, yeah, now I'm sounding really old. Who is the guy that was in Apocalypse Now, the main character? Martin Marlon, Sheen. Marlon Martin, 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 Martin Sheen was in uh, Brother Afro Sheen. Afro Sheen, yes. He was, in, he was in The Final Countdown. If you've ever seen the movie The Final Countdown, I want to say it was early 80s. Fun, 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 fun movie. And that's all we have to say about time. That's right. <laughs> but what fact, we'll join us on our next episode when my clothing will be back in style. And now, if, so time travel, time, if time travel has been invented 100 years from now, our future selves will come back and meet us in this episode in 3, 2, 1. Welcome to Not Attempt to Adjust Your Computer. We have traveled through time 10 minutes. We have, to, we have a bad. Yoda, room. stop talking. Yoda, shut up already. <laughs> Silence. We'd like Silence. to welcome our dolphin overlords to the back of the program. <laughs> exactly, the uh, dinosaur segment. Yes. Uh, they're back to. Yes. Uh, and that would be a fun thing, too, if you had a bad time machine. You went back six minutes. Oh, yeah. <laughs> it's like, okay, okay. Yeah. I don't know, it's, just, it's always fascinating because it seems that people cannot control it. They always say if the molecules have to come together, there's no guarantee that you wouldn't go ahead and be in the middle of a freeway or in the middle of a brick wall. And that's, that's where you pass with the dimension. What's the other show? Uh, sliders. Sliders is a good one. That was more of a different dimension. Was that time travel necessarily? Yeah, a little bit of both. That was probably late 80s. But I'm trying 90s. to think of the show the wife watches uh, religiously. Yeah, the fellow who was the captain on Starship uh, on, the, on the TV show Enterprise, he was in this a long time ago. Uh, he would go back, he would he would time travel, but sometimes he would appear as different people, never appeared as himself. Sometimes he'd be a man, sometimes he'd be a woman. Richard Simmons. Richard Simmons. <laughs> RuPaul. What the hell was the name of that? Oh, David Quantum, yeah, Quantum Leap. Quantum Leap. Scott Bakula. Scott Bakula. Yes, Count Bakula. 
<laughs> that's good. <laughs> that was a time. I don't remember watching that show. I remember it was yeah, on. Yeah, yeah, no, that was a good. That was a good one too. <laughs> and it, it was a catch right. It was oh boy. Yeah, pretty, pretty. Much. So he gets he get to be a, a transvestite. Uh, a trans transvestite vampire. Circus freak. Back to life. I'm sorry. Thank you. Well, we but yeah, that just, was we a good one. All the things. I, I just want to have the control to be able to do it. To go back, uh, allegedly, uh, 75, 80 years ago, an apple. It's not the same apples we have today due to genetic engineering and the stripping of the soil and the minerals and all the things and enzymes that the body digests in. I'll buy that. They're not the same. So an apple today has got nothing to do with an apple of 75 years ago. But I want to taste it back to back. Huh. You know, is, is the air as fresh? Are the, the genetic species exactly the same? Well, look at, look at the chemical composition of humans, how much that's even changed. Uh, today... Do you know what the most commonly found chemical inside the human body is today? What Mountain would you guess? <laughs> no. Chemical? Close. What's the most commonly found form of chemical? Form of chemical found in the human body today? Bleach. Fire retardant chemicals. Because of all the fabrics we breathe in, they're into the fiber. So we breathe it in, it gets in the lungs, it gets into our DNA, and it's passed down through generations. Not that we're not exactly fireproof, but we couldn't, we wouldn't burn up the same way. If you're going to let a human on fire, we wouldn't burn up the same way we do today as we would have 80 years ago. 80 years ago, we would have been crispy critters. Nowadays, probably not so much because of the chemicals that are now in our DNA. Somebody was talking about Elvis, the king of rock and roll, that his colon was so packed mm -hmm. full of preservatives oh, God. that there's probably just a giant colon in his brain <laughs> because it hasn't rotted yet. Huh. You know, all the Twinkies he ate, all the hot dogs. Well, no, there's a the time traveling episode. Let's go back to Elvis <laughs> right before he died. On the toilet. On the toilet. <laughs> Funniest shirt I ever saw was there's a picture of Jesus on front of the cross. Mm -hmm. It said, Jesus died on the cross. But the back of the shirt, Elvis soaked over the toilet, said, but the king died on his throne. <laughs> Well, someone said, if Elvis was so great, why is he buried in his backyard like a hamster? <laughs> and, and, you know, it's, it's amazing. You That's poke, a fair point. You poke fun at the biggest people that, that happened. And as, you know, but I, I think the, the whole time travel thing is it's so fascinating in, in that I, the government has got to be trying it. I'd be shocked if they weren't. I'd be shocked if they were not. It just, I mean, we've talked about cloning before. They're not supposed to. I'd be shocked if they're not trying. I mean, there's got to be lots of secret experiments that they're... They, fooling around with. They cloned a goat at one point, didn't they? Dolly. Dolly. Yeah, that was right. her name. Well, I saw a video one time and it was disturbing about a white mouse that had a human ear on its back. Oh, yes. yeah. And they grew it off of it, yeah. They grew it off the mouse. Well, now, aren't aren't donkeys genetic manipulation between a mule and a horse, or is a mule the genetic? Um, mule, mule, donkey, mule, and a horse. Donkey is a horse. No, I think it's, I think it's uh, uh, Oprah and Roseanne. <laughs> They cloned the both of them. They did a musical called Phantom of the Opera. <laughs> Phantom of the Opera. Exactly right. Well, I think, but, but bad, genetics make, mixing them, have, you know, have always been bad. Yeah. Like they try to do fruits, the, the tangerine. Is oh, it yeah. a tangerine? A, a, or yeah. tangelo? Yeah. A tangerine and an orange. Tangelo, yeah. Uh, mini, mini, mini olas. There's another one. Yep. There's all kind of genetic fruits. Look at the types of apples that are out there. Genetic fruits. <laughs> genetic fruits. There's a band That's name for you. Beautiful. Genetic fruits. <laughs> the genetic fruits. Okay. Out of San Francisco, the genetic fruits. <laughs> With your lead singer, Adam Lambert. <laughs> Jeez. And we only sell organic products in our merchandise. Now, okay, what, a, what a load of crap that is. We talked about <laughs> Kevin Trudeau, I think, in a past episode. Kevin Trudeau is uh, allegedly... Uh, a uh, expert, an expert, and he's in prison for scamming. But he's got uh, several books out. One of them is uh, "Organic Cures They Don't Want You to Know" or "Natural Cures They Don't Want You to Know About." And I was at a thrift store and I bought a twelve CD set of his for just a couple of bucks. I just listened to all of them within the last week, and he's in prison now for, <laughs> for he is for allegedly scamming. But he talks about how the FDA will. will do things to the, only their own manipulation, and the there are natural cures for everything. And the FDA says if you can cure cures from from cancer, they'll they'll charge you with using illegal drugs. Huh? If it's if it's like you know if you eat wheat grass or something and clean your stuff. That really wouldn't surprise me. And I listened to twelve hours of him, and he's angry, and he says the government's trying to shut me down. I don't know if he's a scammer or not, but huh. I listened to twelve to keep me listening for twelve CDs, and they're all probably over an hour each. Well, I mean that's the theory with gasoline too. I mean. The guy who invented a car who can get 100 miles per gallon was dead. He talks quickly. about all of those things. Yeah, so I guess it stands, again, anything's possible. 
what is it probable? All the things that we do to foods nowadays, I, none of it can be really very good. And as far as the nutrients that you get from, as opposed to from organic to non-organic, there's not one study that says there's a huge difference between the two, other than a lesser amount of pesticides. It doesn't mean the kale is better for you. It just means this bit of kale has fewer pesticides than this bit of kale. <laughs> Trudeau's, Trudeau's line all through his CD set was, nature is better than science. True. And you have to believe that. i got to believe there. And look at the Chinese. You, you read some of their medical books, and they've got an herb, a herbal cure, acupuncture. I have backed wing of newt. <laughs> yeah, but there's got to be something, some magic chemical in these things. I'm, I'm sure, the yeah. Anunnaki or whoever, whomever put us here, uh, allegedly, they talked about in the Bible that there's a... a Triple stakes, I'm sure, good for what ails you. Yeah. Absolutely true. <laughs> well, I mean, here's the thing. We live in a non-sustainable... We're non-sustainable. There's no way that by the time the fruit is picked, by the time it gets to the store, you're talking, depending on how far away the orchards or farms are, most apples come from Washington State. So to get a freshly picked apple from Washington State... To Florida. To Florida, it's going to take at least a week and a half... So then it ripens in the meantime. So what they do is they put this waxy coating on to help preserve it. So now they say that that waxy coating, all it takes is a little bit of uh, tap water to wipe that off, and you'll eat the natural apple. Okay, you do that. Then what's in the tap water? Now you can have fluoride with your apple, or God knows what other lead Chlorine. compound, aluminum is in the water. Who knows what? So there's Bug really no poo. way to win. <laughs> Bug poo. There's no way Bug to win. Poo. Bug poo. <laughs> They're more of a salsa band. We got a little Calypso beat. Ladies and gentlemen, the musical stylings of Bug Poo. And America's got talent. Bug Uranus poo. has talent. Bug Poo. The Cryptosporidians. That's going to be the other one. Oh, that's it. You know what that is? You missed that one. The Cryptosporidium is a virus that comes through drinking water, and it, it really... It, it, it's bad. It guts your stomach. I mean, it goes through you like a Canadian quarter through a vending machine. So then you have to boil all your water or drink bottled water. It happens a lot. In older cities with lead pipes. And my nickname is Mr. Lucky for a reason. I had a car accident in 1993 and I almost died. I broke my sternum, flipped a convertible over. Mm -hmm. And when I went home, the last thing they told me when I left the hospital was, drink a lot of water. <laughs> well, there was this little thing in the Milwaukee uh, water system called Cryptos. This was big uh, a number of years ago. The water makes you poo. And I was in the hospital with broken bones and narcotic drugs mm -hmm. makes you, it binds you up is what it does. So I drank a lot of water and it, it, it hurt to go. And, and it's funny now, but it wasn't funny that I was oh. literally screaming uh, on, the, on the pot. So I would take the DeLorean and go back in time yeah. uh, <laughs> to change, to tell the house builders to sell them on hardcore PVC piping for plumbing instead of lead, and we could have saved a lot of pain, anguish, lives, you name it, could have all been saved. Don't bet on the Cubs. <laughs> you know, for 108 years. That yeah, been. no, yeah, yeah. A lot of things, I mean, even if you couldn't go that way for, for selfish purposes, winning lotteries and things like that, would, would you tell people to exercise more, you know, stay out of war? That's a good question. So, Carrie, if you can go back in time, with any message you see fit, whether... It's to tell your younger self, buy stock in Apple. Not Apples, but Apple computers. Or buy stock in, in Yahoo or whatever. Yeah. Or if you could go back and tell somebody of authority, watch out for Hitler. This guy is nutso cuckoo. What would, what do you, what would, what do you, what's the first, what pops in your head? What, would, what do you think you'd do? I don't know. I'm not too creative like you guys, but. We're like, not that creative. No. You we're are. Just older. <laughs> we, we're just older. We made a lot I'm more just, mistakes. That's right. Just looking back now, though, like, I wish I would have done better in school. I wish I was more active in school. Like, I had a lot awesome. of ideas I wanted to throw out there, but I was always the shy kid and never wanted to do anything. So tell yourself not to be so introverted to uh, yeah. I am woman, hear me roar type of thing. All right. It's not that great. Let me ask you this while we're going down that road. Yeah. Do you think you were born in the right time for you? Because mm. some people are born too soon, some people are born too late. Yeah, people who don't fit their particular era. Like, for example, a millennial who would hate technology and would rather use a yeah. phone booth. That would be a, that would be an example of someone born out of time. Yeah. Um, Not to pick on millennials. No, I, I would I'm like a, to pick on millennials. <laughs> <laughs> I don't letters need addressed to, to me. <laughs> I'm a You're junkie the, for anything 90s, so probably if I grew up in 70s or 80s. Okay. <laughs> okay. 
I don't know. I mean, again, I don't know if I believe in astrology. I happen to be a Pisces, and allegedly Pisces are the old souls. We've been through a lot. It's like a lot of times people say, when you work on your life with a with an axe and you're trying to, hit, and then you work your way down to a fingernail file, the mm -hmm. final finish. And the Pisces allegedly are, have been all through it all, and we're working on whatever we have to work mm -hmm. on. You know, I mean, depending on who you believe, uh, was it the, the, the Buddhists believe you come back and you eventually reach Nirvana? You have lessons to learn. Allegedly, allegedly, there's a council, and the soul goes in front of the council and said, "Okay, you will go live your life on Earth and accomplish these things. If you don't accomplish those things, we'll come back after your life, and you have to go back and do them again." Huh? Just like Groundhog Day, you have to keep yeah. going back till you get it right. <laughs> and I think a lot of people, you you look and think, "Okay, what is their?" I had an aunt that died. She was 64 when she died. I don't ever remember her admitting she was wrong ever. It was always someone else. I don't need help. You need help. I'm right. You're wrong. <laughs> And she was nuttier than a squirrel turd, as my grandpa used to say, and nobody liked her. And when she died, there weren't enough people there to have a funeral for her. I hate to say that. I tried to be nice to her. She was kooks. Right. And uh, I just, I, yeah. Okay. okay. Yeah. Sorry. Sorry. Just, no, the subtle look at the clock. We, got a 30 we need a big one back there. We'll exactly. Yeah. Right. yeah. We'll get that in future yeah. episode. So uh, anyway, my point is, she was not a Pisces, and I think she's got to be back again. And sometimes, you know, I don't know about you, I'll, I'll be somewhere, and I'll see, like, a bird land. Give me this really stupid look. And I'm thinking, <laughs> is that my aunt coming back to me and saying now she's a crow picking up uh, worms on the highway? Cover your eyeballs. She's coming after them. I, I don't know. I mean, I, I don't know whether to believe that or not. What, I, uh, I, what, what sign are you? Yeah. With? I'm a Capricorn. Okay. I'm Sagittarius. Do you believe in it? I, say, I, I don't do. know if I believe. I think it's so interesting. But do you think that if we could read, if, if I read Aries as, as your, oh yeah, that's me. I read a Pisces as Greg's, oh that's me. I think a lot of them have things that, well yeah, that, I guess I could be that way. Sure, you yeah. could. I mean, who? There's a famous person who would perpetually read the horoscopes, but he he only he picked the one that he thought was the best for him that day. That day. <laughs> Never went for the one that was him. Was like, yeah, no, no, no. Oh, I like that one. I'm gonna pick that one. Oh, Switch that's funny. Yeah. That's really funny. I'll, I'll find out who that was, but that's a that's a. Famous like, pick one. a card. Is that your horoscope? <laughs> no, don't like it. Ah, oh, that one. Again. There seems to be something to it. I don't know. And then again, I think we all are egotistical enough to want to have a purpose. Yeah. You don't just wander through life, eating a food, drinking the water, sleeping, reproducing, spawning, and then leaving. What if we had no purpose? It sure seems that way sometimes. Doesn't that seem I mean, random? that's the thing. If you can go back in time and meet your maker, meet the maker and ask him, why did you make us? And if their answer was, for the same reason a dog licks itself, because we can't. <laughs> mm-hmm. Then what? So we have no purpose. We're just here to do whatever. Would that change your outlook? Would you, would you then quit your job and just live live in a cave somewhere, live in a sweet life, fishing and not having to worry about life, knowing that you don't really have a purpose? Would that change your outlook on what it is that you feel you need to do? But if we have the, the thought in our mind that we have a purpose, that means we could have a purpose, doesn't Keeps it? Keeps you going. It sure seems like that carries on fun. Sure does. Um, I don't know. Or the know. can of Jolly Good Soda perpetually <laughs> out of reach. Yeah, I mean, you know, you talk about the, the last, this is the last go round for me. I have learned a ton. I've made more mistakes than I can ever remember making. And I don't want to come back here. When I'm gone, it's like, wheel me out. Don't have a funeral. Put me in a hefty bag. Toss me in the river. I'm carp food. See you later. We'll put you in a North Korean missile and aim you at Uranus. <laughs> Uranus is always at attention when I'm on duty. And these, hopefully, these episodes will be like, oh, that guy was nuts. Let's watch some of these episodes again. And I think we all are. I mean, just some people that you just have a cosmic bond with. Yeah. I think whether it's it's a childhood friend that you meet, you just know that, or, or a, a spouse, lover, whatever. And you just you yeah, when you meet destiny. him, yeah, when you meet him, say, man, it's like we've met before, or mm -hmm. I can, like we've known each other for years, even though we just met. There's got to be Deja something vu. to that. There's something yeah. to that. Yeah, we don't know what it is, but then we're delving into it. Yeah, exactly. I mean, that's, but that's common. It's not just us that feels these. It's it's everyone. Everyone's always met. Man, I just met that person yesterday, but man, it feels like we've met before. Yeah. Man, I swear we've met some other way, some other time. Maybe that's past life. Yeah. I, mean, I don't know. A lot of religions, I know the Bible doesn't talk about past life. I don't know if you're one Some religions do. Some people believe it. Some people don't. Then there are the past life, uh, what would you call them, regressors? Who, uh, who, yeah. who put you under and hypnotize yeah. you? I tend to think a lot of that is a scam. Because everybody's royalty. You were, you were dancing with kings in the 14th century. Did anybody shovel shit? <laughs> you know, did anybody with shit shovelers? Yeah. <laughs> you know, one on one. I mean, I, I realize this is not the radio, but I, just, I can't think of a better better word for it. 
You know, it's a low life maggot. Somebody, well, you know, you were born to die in a plane. Take a line from Caddyshack. Well, the world needs ditch diggers too, you know. Yeah, no, it does. Sure it, it does. But, but think about the, the lifespan back then. You talk about the, even in American times. I'm not talking about the, uh, the the European the plagues. As they were going to the plane states, you had 14 kids and six made it. You know, and they, they died and you just cranked out another one. That was hard life back then. Yeah, it was. And you had to build your own house and plant your own food. And you weren't going to amusement parks. And you weren't texting. You got a wood-burning texter. Which you had That's why, as, as humans, after you. families are smaller nowadays because you don't need to have six kids to go rumbling through the woods to kill the bear to eat for two days. And look at horrible physical shape. It right? looks like, you know, <laughs> the exercise I get is, you know, putting the toilet seat down on the front. <laughs> It's, it's frightening me that I think what we are built for is not moving. That's why cancer is here. I'm telling you, Kevin Trudeau, listen to those CDs. Whether the guy's in jail or not, I, I think that's some interesting stuff. Yeah. Him. And he talks about how it's a big government conspiracy and follow the money. And I hate to say it, follow the money. You said that for years. Yeah, we've been saying that for a long time. So, yeah, who has to gain and who, who stands to gain the most? So who's cashing the checks? That's where you want to start looking deeply under the covers. An example you used was that, uh, did you have the food pyramid in school? Yeah. yeah. Okay. And that was a lot bigger as, as we got older. I, I would talk to kids younger than me and nieces and nephews about you. Well, that kind of started when I was in school. We talked about how dairy is one of the food groups. Well, who sponsors that? The, the dairy is Dairy a council, yeah. Yes, they say, well, you have to do. Uh, allegedly, I'm kidding, allegedly, that the human body does not need milk after age six. That's true. Huh. But they all say, oh, have milk, have cheese, have dairy, and we're all balloon asses. Everyone. <laughs> I can I can vouch for that as having as many kidney stones as I have ever yeah. My doctor always told me, he goes, well, how, how late in life did you drink milk? I don't know, through high school. I was like, why? Uh, it tastes good. In school, in Wisconsin, give you free milk. What are you supposed it's to? It's subsidized by the government. Of course it is. Yeah. I get it. And, uh, Damn you, dairy council. <laughs> well, I don't know, there's, there's also a book about your body type, too, and, and some blood types need meat and some others don't. And Do you know what your blood type is? Oh, positive. Uh, ZZ extra negative. <laughs> you know, and I, I, I should. Don't, I don't. I don't, I don't know. I should know, but I'm afraid I have no idea. Congrats for knowing your blood type. That's yeah. kudos. I, I don't know. Would you know? You probably know that when you're. Uh... Well, I'm about to have uh, a low metric ton of blood work done, so I will Let know. know. Yeah, I will know what my blood type. Let is. us know. Vulcan <laughs> green blood. Green blooded inhuman bastard. Well, supposedly, uh, with some some matches with everything, and some blood. Is, I don't know what the rarest one. Is. Some are more rare than others. Yes, yeah. correct. O is what is it? The universal donor, so you can give it to any kind of blood. Uh, first but your A's and B's are a little bit more specific. Sometimes you have to be an A positive. You have to get an arthritic uh, <laughs> orangutan with leukemia. <laughs> you get a transfusion of a pint. Yeah. A shot glass full of blood. <laughs> from yeah. a, from a that was it too. Spastic O's. Vulcan. O's can only receive O's as well. Oh. O's can only receive O's? Yeah. Yeah. Well, that's another thing too. I mean, how, how long ago did blood transfusions? That, that hasn't been long. Uh, didn't that come about due to war? Now, I could be dead wrong, but I want to say somewhere is in World War I so they started the blood transfusion thing. And I want to say the Germans were behind it. They're the ones who come up with first... They're the, behind the, a lot of stuff. Well, the biggest medical advances Various came corrupts. about through war because we just destroyed the human body. So you're in a, in a hurry to try to quick fix it back together. And while you're doing this stuff, oh, look, we just invented a new process. To do this, we never would have thought of doing this had his face not been blown up. But now look, we can replace his face. I'm making that part up, but I'm saying that's how it works. Replacement face. Com. The replacement faces. Ooh, Velcro face. <laughs> well, on that happy note, we're going to end this episode. <laughs> Thank you, Al, for not pitching a fit. Thank you, Tribble. Uh, my name is Dobie Maxwell. This is Greg McGuire. This is Kerry Turner. If you'd like to get a hold of us, we'd love to hear from you on uh, Facebook. We have a Facebook page. Kids, tell them how to get all the Mothership Connection Facebook page or uh, Gregory DeGuire Facebook page, and it's a picture of a feller with an elephant's trunk for a nose. Uh, you can get us on email, alienxfile at wi.rr.com or WLIP Mothership at live.com or on Tumblr. Yes, Tumblr, the Mothership Connection. We'll have it in the link below so you can see it there. Find us on YouTube. Uh, like uh, and subscribe to our YouTube page. Yes, please. Uh, we appreciate it. The more followers, the better we can do, the more we can put out. And we have lots of guests coming your way. If you have a show topic that you'd like to discuss, please get a hold of us. 
chances are very good that we'll get to it. The mothership flies in all corners of the universe. Thank you for watching. We're out.